Here is a quick overview of the Confusion Matrix dashboard. The dashboard can hold one, two, or three panels. The leftmost panel is the main panel. It contains an entire data set. There are some preloaded data sets, and you can load your own data. The other two panels are slices, or subsets of the data, that you can select with these dropdowns. The dashboard is designed to fit a standard HD screen. That's 1920 by 1080 pixels. The dashboard shows two graphs. The horizontal axis is prediction score for events you observe to come out one way or another, positive or negative. Score can be on any scale, but sample events are grouped into bins of successive score ranges. The vertical axis shows negative outcome events in green, positive outcomes in red. The upper graph plots the events as stacked histograms. The lower graph plots the negative and positive outcome events separately as distribution curves. The vertical line sets the decision threshold. Events to the left of the threshold are negative predictions, while events to the right of the threshold are predicted to have a positive outcome. The confusion matrix itself tallies how the positive and negative event predictions relate to positive and negative outcomes. First, we look at raw counts. In this example of 3,781 samples, the top row shows that 1,682 were negative outcomes. This is called condition negative, or CN. The second row shows that there were 2,099 positive outcomes. This is called condition positive, CP. The breakdown of predictions depends on the decision threshold. As we move the threshold to lower or higher prediction scores, predicted event counts shift between the negative prediction column and the positive prediction column. True negatives are green, or negative outcomes, to the left of the decision threshold. False negatives are red, or positive outcomes, that lie on the left side of the decision threshold. Somehow these samples were assigned prediction scores that are too low. True positives are red, or positive outcomes, to the right of the decision threshold. False positives are green, or negative outcomes, that were predicted positive because they fall on the right side of the decision threshold. To assess performance of a prediction and decision process, we look at ratios instead of absolute numbers. What fraction of predictions were correct or incorrect? The main ratio table on the right divides raw counts by numbers of outcomes. The top row shows true negative rate and false positive rate. The denominator is the number of green negative outcome events which is a condition negative count. The second row shows false negative rate and true positive rate. The denominator is number of red positive outcome events, which is the condition positive count. There's one more table of ratios that is useful as well. These are called conditional use measures. The conditional use measures normalize counts not by outcomes, but by predictions. The negative predictions are in the left column and the positive predictions are in the right column. The most popular conditional use measure is precision. Another name for precision is PPV, or positive predictive value. Precision says what proportion of samples that you predicted to be positive turned out actually to be positive. That's the ratio of true positive predictions to all positive predictions. On the graphs, precision is the amount of red area to the right of the decision threshold compared to red plus green falling on the right of the threshold. The complement of precision is false decision rate. That's the amount of green area to the right of the threshold compared to red plus green falling on the right of the threshold. Similarly, negative predictive value is the proportion of green falling to the left of the threshold, and false emission rate is the proportion of red falling to the left of the threshold. This tells, of the samples that we predicted to be negative because they are on the left of the threshold, what fraction actually were positive. Down here are a bunch of summary statistics that mix different combinations of the prediction and outcome counts and ratios in various formulas. These have names like overall accuracy, the F1 score, the Matthews correlation coefficient. Read all about these in the Wikipedia article about the confusion matrix. Finally, two other plots are commonly used. The receiver operating characteristic, or ROC curve, plots true positive rate versus false positive rate. If the threshold is all the way over to the left, then every sample is predicted to be a positive outcome. 
will predict 100% of the actual red positive outcomes, so the true positive rate will be 1.0. Perfect. But we'll also predict all of the negative outcome samples to be positive. So the false positive rate will also be 1.0, which is bad. As we raise the decision threshold, then we start to lose some true positives and false positives until at a maximum threshold, every sample prediction will be below the threshold. The false positive rate will be zero, which is good, but also the true positive rate will be zero, which is bad. So we try to set the threshold at a happy medium to maximize the true positive rate and minimize the false positive rate. How well this can be done depends on the shape of the ROC curve. Notice that the ROC curve does not depend on the threshold. It depends on the shapes of the positive and negative prediction distributions. The decision threshold chooses one trade-off point that lies on the ROC curve. If the samples are perfectly separated, then the ROC curve bends more sharply. We can set a threshold that puts the trade-off way up here in the upper left corner, where we get both a high true positive rate and a low false positive rate. A way of measuring how well separated the positive and negative predictions are is the area under the ROC curve, AUC, for area under curve. A perfect prediction and decision process gets an AUC of 1.0. For a process that has no predictive power, the red and green distributions are not separated and the AUC is 1 half. The last plot that is often used is the precision recall curve. This tells how precision, which measures how many positive predictions are actually positive outcomes, trades off against recall, which measures how many positive outcomes are actually picked up as positive predictions. So there's an overview of a confusion matrix dashboard panel. There's a lot there. That's what it means to be a dashboard. If you're a data person, you can have loads of fun playing with distributions and decision thresholds and watching how the various terms in the confusion matrix behave. Load your own data. And check out my other videos about the adjustable prediction outcome distributions, the Apple Snacks example, the positive prediction ratio, and other exciting topics. And if you're a data nerd who made it this far through my video, congratulations.